They're perhaps best known for one of the most famous comedy routines of all time. Who's on first? What's on second? I don't know is on third. You know the guy's I'll... name's on the baseball team? Yes. Well, go ahead. Who's on first? Yes. I mean the guy's name. Who? The guy playing first. Who? The guy playing first base. Who? <laughs> the guy on first base. <laughs> Who is on first? What are you asking me for? I don't know. <laughs> Despite the fact that World War II was raging at the time, in 1942, Bud Abbott and Lou Costello were on top of the world. They were the biggest box office draw on the planet and also had one of the highest rated shows on network radio. So it's no surprise that the U.S. government, looking to raise money for the war effort, asked if the duo would hit the road to sell war bonds. They agreed and their itinerary one August day brought them to Marquette and Ishpeming. In Marquette, plans called for them to appear at the old county fairgrounds on the north side of town to give a speech, tell a few jokes, and push the sale of bonds. That, however, was nothing compared to what they had planned in Ishpeming. Before the duo were to appear at Alqual, Ishpeming and Nagani were getting together for what the Marquette Mining Journal called one of the biggest celebrations ever to hit the area. A parade was scheduled. Bands would be performing, an army unit from a fort in the Sioux was bringing up trucks and tanks, and fireworks were to be shot off after the show. In all, organizers expected over 20,000 people to attend. Abbott and Costello arrived in Marquette Saturday, August 8, 1942, the night before their big show, and stayed at the Hotel Northland. They were also given the key to the city and found out that one little thing had been added to their schedule, a visit to the Marquette Branch Prison. And that's where things went a little awry. The next day, the comedians went out to the prison and performed for inmates, inmates who couldn't even buy war bonds, but said that they would at the first available opportunity. In fact, Lou Costello told the Mining Journal that, quote, this has been one of the most interesting experiences of our tour of the country. We wouldn't have missed it for the world, unquote. Now, while all of this was going on, the Marquette rally was about to begin and the parade had already started in Ishpeming. However, before they left the prison, the warden invited the two of them, along with a few dignitaries, to sit down to a lake trout dinner. And while it wasn't on the schedule, they didn't want to turn down the invitation and enjoyed the feast. Abbott and Costello finally made it to the Marquette rally late, although that didn't stop the 5,000 or so in the crowd from rushing the stage to catch the world-famous comedians, who didn't disappoint by performing Who's On First, as well as a specially written sketch claiming that people in Marquette could construct buildings faster than anyone in the world, even New Yorkers. Lou Costello also had the crowd in stitches as he tried, in many ways, to pronounce Ishpeming. The comedians then hopped on the train and headed out west. At Alqual, people had started to gather for the show early that afternoon, right after the parade. Unfortunately, because of the delays in Marquette, the duo couldn't appear until early that evening, hours after they were scheduled. To the disappointment of the 20,000 or so who did show up, they only had time for one routine, which was, of course, who's on first. Abbott and Costello then hopped back on the train and sped toward Ironwood, where they would be performing the next day. Now, the reason the duo came to the UP was to sell war bonds, and that they did. The 5,000 people who attended the Marquette show bought over $10,000 worth, while the Ishpeman crowd added another 5,000. That was all just part of the $200 billion worth of bonds sold during the seven drives held by the government. And that's how, for a day and a half of 1942, Bud Abbott and Lou Costello were counted among the residents of Ishpeming and Marquette.